Welcome. Hello, everyone. Hey, hey, Vulcan team. That's working on Facebook as well. Awesome. Welcome, you guys, to your final week of your 30 day challenge. I hope you guys have been having a blast. We've been seeing some amazing selfies. Uh, I'm, I'm really appreciating, you know, the boxing selfies, the selfies while walking uh, your kids, any kind of selfie that you guys have been sending through, whether it be cycling. I mean, there's been a lot of cycling. They don't get boring, by the way. Keep the cycling ones coming. Uh, amazing creativity as well. Thanks for the hashtags. I knew you guys would be good at that part, though. So great work. And as you know, after this week, we will be announcing the winner. And the grand prizes are amazing. So thank you to Vulcan for you know, donating these amazing grand prizes to you guys on your health and wellness journey. All right, here we go for sleep and optimization of your sleep, which will increase your energy levels. And we do have an activator. So Dom, if you're, you're tuning in, you already know exactly how I feel, which it is in the name of our body type that we are activators and meaning that we have a lot of energy and moving is the most important thing to an activator. But we're gonna discuss some tips and tricks around all different types of uh, phenotypes, as well as in general, how to optimize your energy. And why is this so important to your health and wellness? This is important to yourself, your family, your kids, everyone. So let's get started. Let's get into what you guys will be seeing today. I'm gonna to share my screen with you guys. Awesome. So we're going into increase your energy and sleep optimization. If you have any questions along the way, I've got the Facebook page pulled up. I will be answering questions. And yes, even the silly ones, I will be answering. I've just arrived back in Sydney. It's so good to be back here. And we're working with a few clients that really need to see this. This is actually the baseline level of where we begin with a lot of our clients is how important sleep is. Now, let me give you a little taste of this is, it seems old, but it's actually new news in the health and fitness industry. I've just gotten back from Canada and I was speaking at CamFit Pro and it's the largest fitness conference in the world, they say, with regards to presenters coming in from all over the world. And one of the number one touched on topics was sleep and how to improve your client's sleep. Now, this should be something that all personal trainers are doing. However, it's something that's very rarely touched on. And today being our last activation of the month, I believe it's very important, even if you're catching this in the replay, give me some thumbs up if you guys are catching this on the replay and some hearts. If you guys are tuning in right now, show me some love throughout the screen and let me know that you're tuning in. All right, here we go. How to increase your sleep optimization. So some of the topics we're gonna to be looking at today. Number one, why is optimizing sleep important to our health? Number two, three tips to optimizing sleep and energy levels. Number three, your personalized pH 360 shake slash shea tips around sleep. So we're gonna get into how you find your personalized tips. Lastly, as usual with all of our activations, we're gonna be taking some Q and A's and uh, uh, obviously any questions as we go, I will try to answer as well. I've got it up, we're ready to rock. Here we go. So why is sleep optimization important? Sleeping, well, this makes us feel better, more alert, energetic, better able to concentrate and perform our daily tasks. So sleep literally affects our mood with our relationships. It affects how we perform at work, uh, especially in the specific types of jobs that you guys have at Vulcan Steel. Sleep is so, so important. If you're sleep deprived, that's when all of the little mistakes start to happen. So generally, there, there's two things that um, as a, a leader of my company, of, of a company myself, I'll ask if I start to see somebody making a lot of little mistakes. The first one is, is something going on at home? Is there something 
uh, you know, emotional that's going on. The second one right away is, are you getting enough sleep? Because this is what causes all of those, uh, you know, turmoils, mistakes, things that will really affect you at your workplace is, is sleep. So getting enough sleep each day is one of the most important things you can do for your health and well-being and to reduce your risk for ill health. So when it comes to long-term sustainable health, which is the game that we are in right now, that is why we're here. That's the Vulcan Health and Wellness Program. We're not looking for a quick fix. We are going for long-term sustainable health. And sleep is a big, if not the number one component of that. And we're going to go over the subcomponents right now of sleep and why it's important. And you'll notice that yes, nutrition and exercise are within those components and they all affect sleep. So let's get into it. So these are our three tips and I'm going to go through them slowly with you guys, three tips to sleep optimization. And if you're having bad sleep, please. Um, and if, or your partner's having uh, restless nights, Please share this with them, best friends. It's a fantastic webinar for people to just get some quick tips that it can improve their sleep. Oh, don't pardon the pun overnight. So please share this with them. Absolutely love for you guys to do that. Number one, we term it's just light, light in general. So ensuring adequate exposure to natural light, for example, is very, very important. Um, and this is particularly important for individuals who may not venture outside frequently. So exposure to sunlight during the day, as well as darkness at night, helps us to maintain a healthy sleep-wake cycle. So for those that are in the factory all day, so, so important. And I know that on the Yatla site, I see this a lot. Uh, so over in Queensland, getting outside of the actual factory is important whether it's on your break, your lunch break, getting that fresh air, getting that natural light is so, so important. Now, this next topic of light, I could, I've actually done hours of lectures on. So uh, most re recently, um, one of the talks I was inspired by was a, a, a TED talk, and it was a 60 minute TED talk on how to just decrease the amount of artificial light and why this is so important to our health now in 2019. In 2009, it wasn't as important as it is right now. And what do I mean by artificial light? Well, this is the light emitted from our screens. That is artificial light. This is blue light, which is the same frequency as light radiated from the sun. But light can interfere with our sleep patterns by interfering with our circadian rhythm, by tricking our brains into thinking it is still daytime. So our circadian rhythm is our natural body clock that we want to have in sync. And that's what we often, what is discussed in the Shea or PH360 platform when it comes to when you should be sleeping. It's showing us what your personalized natural body clock is. So with regards to blue light, let me give you some quick tips around this. So the first one is when you're waking up in the morning, try not to have this, your cell phone, as your alarm clock. Go out and purchase a separate alarm clock so that you're not immediately seeing this light as soon as you wake up. And as soon as you wake up, try to avoid touching or going for your phone or switching on the TV or switching on your laptop, whatever it might be, for the first 60 minutes that you're awake. This allows your body to wake up more in its natural state rather than getting disrupted into one, someone else's reality. Because if you open up your phone right away and there's messages, there's emails on your phone, you're actually going into somebody else's reality. You're then going into answering emails. You're going into all of these different stressors and things that will naturally, as you can imagine, start to throw off your body clock, your circadian rhythm, because you want to wake up in a relaxed state of mind to be able to have that mental focus for the day. So try not to touch your phones for the first 60 minutes of the day. And we're going to give some other tips uh, later on, but 
I highly suggest journaling, meditating. These are all things that are just really healthy for us, for our mind when we wake up in the morning. The next tip, it's on the same plane of our phones. Try not to touch our phones for 60 minutes before we go to sleep. So put it on airplane mode. I know a lot of people do that, which is amazing. Do whatever you need to do to not look at this light for 60 minutes before you go to sleep. Because if you do, it's throwing off your rhythm. It's not allowing you to go into that sleep in a, in a nice manner that your body's used to because it's naturally thinking it's sunlight. It's thinking that it's it's daytime still. Your body doesn't know that it's your phone and you're answering a surprised email that you know you just got through that from, from a friend or from Vulcan that you thought you needed to answer right then, which is showing off your, your circadian rhythm. So two big tips, try to stay away from your phone for 60 minutes after you've woken up, 60 minutes before you go to bed, getting into that circadian rhythm. Awesome. Got it, under control, good. Next tip, nutrition. Hey, hey, we've got somebody live. I'm not sure who you are, but thank you for joining me. Hey, Mana. hey, Kate, hi, you guys. Thanks for joining live. Awesome, thanks for the love. Love it, love it, love it. Ask any questions you'd like throughout this time. I'd absolutely love that. So next tip is on nutrition. So nutrition, the organs involved in the digestion of food will also give information to our body clock. If our organs are not processing foods at the time we would expect, our body clock can become out of sync with the usual day slash night cycle. This is why it's important to adhere to our food chronobiology when it comes to sleep. So when it comes to, and I'll go into this a little bit later on in the next section, when it comes to the Shea app, as you guys know, it gives you an outline of when you should be eating, when is a good time for your personalized body clock, for you guys, for your, uh, I mean, chronobiology to be eating. Um, for example, food ingested late at night after 8 p.m. when we are meant to be winding down and resting can stimulate our muscles that it is time to move because there has been an influx and rise in blood glucose levels. So it gets us excited. We want to get outside. We want to do something. We want to exercise. We want to get activated, which is actually not what we want at that time. So in, so important when it comes to when we eat. And I know that we've discussed this already, but this is the key difference of the Shea app in comparison to your regular uh, diets or, or your the things that are coming out with regards to fad diets now, they will not give you a personalized program of when to eat. So timing of eating can become a crucial part and a crucial, crucial part of the game when it comes to achieving your goals within this health and wellness program. And as you can see, it also highly affects our sleep patterns. So if we're eating really late at night, which I know uh, as I went through with a few of you guys, it, it comes back to, we have been eating late at night because we're getting home late. Um, if we're a shift worker, that's just when we, we, when we can eat. That's when we start reorganizing, looking at how can we eat earlier and can we have our dinner on a break at work while we're still working instead of eating late at night at home? Is there a way to uh, organize our schedule in a way that fits our personalized program? And that's where coaching comes in. So if you're saying, Meg, there's no way that I can do that. There's no way I can figure it out. Jump on a call with us. So those that have had the, your, their first activation calls with Sage, amazing. Thank you guys so much for participating thus far. We only have a few people left right now. So almost everyone has done their first call. We look forward to the second call, but it does not take us asking you guys to schedule in a call. If you have questions with anything that I'm going over today, please feel free to ask us to schedule in another call and we can go through how to better prioritize or organize your, 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 your eating habits to match, to really uh, up the level and up your game to allow yourself to get an optimized level of sleep each night, which is so important. 
And the other thing, which I know you guys know, staying hydrated, is that when we're eating late at night, our body has no ability to work off those extra carbohydrate <clears throat> carbohydrates and fats that we're ingesting. So not only is it disrupting our sleep, but our body is so we are also taking on uh, and carrying on carrying uh, and most likely carrying um, actually uh, taking in more fat and more and actually holding on to that because we're not burning it off like we would be during the day. So there's a lot of reasons around proper eating times that goes into what your main goals are throughout this program. All right, number three is exercise. And yes, this, this is one of my favorite topics, of course. So why is exercise important to sleep optimization? Exercise will improve sleep by increasing, uh, increasing energy out, output and making us more tired. In general, the best time to exercise for all health, health types is after we eat or after food. In the afternoon or early evenings, um, it will warm up the body, which assists in preparing it for sleep. Exercising too late in the evenings can increase cortisol levels, which can interrupt sleep. So I actually just did a talk about cortisol levels and what cortisol does, and it was at a mental health convention. So I compared cortisol to the happy drug. So cortisol is what, it, when we exercise, we get hormones released and one of them being uh, cortisol, which makes us feel really good. It makes us feel really, really happy and energized, which is not something that we want before we go to bed. So if we're exercising right before bed, this could be something that keeps us up for an hour or two later. And I know what you're thinking, Meg, when I'm done exercising, I am dead. I just feel like going right to sleep. Well, that little part between, maybe it's when you're driving home to the moment that you hit the pillow, may, maybe you're providing yourself, your body enough time to start slowing down, but everybody after exercise goes through something called EPOC. And EPOC, post-exercise consumption, when you're going through this EPOC optimized consumption, it's oxygen consumption, sorry. It's, it's actually making you, it's turning your body on to start consuming more oxygen within the body. And as we're going through that initial stage of EPOC, it is giving us more energy. And afterwards, it's actually helping us burn more fat, even when we're sleeping. However, it's so important that if you are exercising, try to exercise a bit before you're immediately going to sleep. So just that exercise timing can also become a real critical player in sleep optimization. So those are our three biggest pillars when it comes to our circadian rhythm. Who knows what circadian rhythm is on there? Mana, can you tell me what circadian rhythm means again? Or Kate? Give me some answers. What's circadian rhythm? I got one person in. That, that is our body clock. So our circadian rhythm is known as our body clock. That's our natural sleep patterns of when we want to, to wake up and experience the day and when we want to go to bed. So really looking at our sleep-wake cycle and balancing our body clock, our circadian rhythm is so important. It's important to our long-term health and decreasing illness as well. Awesome. All right, so now we've got some Buzzville Coaches quick tips for sleeping better. And, and one sec, I just got my amazing, they are so cute. I'm going to move into our, off, our office right now because Georgia, who knows when to sleep. Hi, Georgie. It's amazing how kids just know how to sleep. Hi, how are you today? Do you have fun at the park? Oh, great. Do you want to say hi? This is Georgie. She's a bit shy because she's going to go for her natural nap now. Oh, okay, see you. 
all right, I'm going to move into the office and know that they'd be coming home. So kids are awesome because we let kids just sleep when they're meant to. All right, back into my home office here. So let's look at our Buzzville coaches for sleeping better. So the first one is that if you, if you look at how we, and it's not on there, but how we actually raise our children or uh, Georgie's just turning two, she sleeps exactly when she needs to sleep. We don't wake her up in the morning. We allow her to have that full night's sleep. And with, with adults, we're, you know, we're so busy. We're in the zone. We're always having something to do. We don't get the luxury of what kids, uh, of, of children, of what kids get to do. But if you look at their sleep patterns, they are in, they are the best example. So I know a lot of you guys have kids or are about to have some more kids. If you look at their natural circadian rhythm, that is the best example of getting into the groove. They're, they're literally just living their body clock, which is amazing. All right. So let's get into, oh, sorry. There we go. Let's get into the quick tip. So the first one I, I touched on initially already, which is meditation. And I know that we haven't gone deep into mindset meditation work, but we are going to give you a full activation on meditation as well as how to get started with meditation. Uh, one of the best right away, I'm just going to give you what I use for meditation because I'm an activator and meditation did not come easy to me. Um, I'll give you my age so that you know how long it took me to get to this round. So I, when I was playing professional basketball, when I was uh, between the ages of 28 and 30, I know it's getting up there, wait for it. I just got into the realm of mind and meditation. And this is what I use now still to this day, and it's six years later, so yes, I just gave you my age, if you can do math, is the Calm app. So you'll see the app right there. That is the Calm app, a fantastic app to start off if you have no clue about meditation or where, where to start, but you're feeling maybe that you're not getting enough sleep, that you're feeling anxious, uh, that you are feeling anxiety that you're feeling uh you know all, like de depression there's so many amazing reasons to meditate if you're feeling alone all of these things when you meditate even though you do meditate alone meditation helps bring you back to self and calms the mind and literally gets all of those negative thoughts out of your mind so meditation is number one for a reason. These are in order of our, our quick tips. Meditate before bed can really assist. So my, the Calm app I suggest to a lot of my best friends and there's a lot of different uh, calming things that you can listen to before bed. But if you're having trouble sleeping, try the Calm app, try some sort of meditation. Number two, is reading and i had the book beside me what i'm reading right now it's a brand new tony robbins book that i just got given to me but reading is so soothing and for me as soon as i start reading if i get into a book it literally unfortunately when i was doing my master's at university put me to sleep so reading is key like that is one that i highly suggest to you guys Hey, Carl, thanks for tuning in. Uh, reading is a huge one as well. Number three, having warm showers or bath before bed can really put your mind at ease. And this is also something that if you're a parent out there, I bet you've been, uh, you bet you've heard this tip that if your child's having trouble sleeping and they're screaming at night and you just can't put them down, you've tried everything, you've tried the bottle, you've tried reading, um, obviously you can't yell at your kid and say, meditate more, um, but putting them in a warm bath and then bringing them out usually puts a baby to sleep. Again, babies are a great example of what, how we can actually treat ourselves. 
So having a warm bath before bed can be so crucial to helping you get to sleep. Number four, warm tea before bed. So this is uh, non-caffeinated tea, obviously. Um, so having a nice warm tea before bed, it's the, similar to a warm bath, but for your insides, it um, can be nice and soothing. Writing in a journal before bed or writing tomorrow's plan before bed um, can be really beneficial in particular for diplomats. So I know a lot of us tuning in are diplomats. This can assist us in knowing what is, is to come. And as a diplo, that's super important. If we know what the next day brings and we're, we're, we feel that we're ready, that we've planned it out, then we can sleep at ease. That is a much easier sleep. So. And that also helps crusaders as well. Crusaders that need to know, you know, everything is taken care of. I've got my checklist in, play, in plan and everything's ready to rock. That's another fantastic one. Number six, white noise. And we've got a white noise machine in Georgie's room. And in uh, an adult setting for myself, and this is a nice little Megan tip, I, uh, my mom got me into this is a fan. So the white noise, it's not even actually facing the bed. It's that the fan really just creates that nice white noise in the background for me that helps me get to bed. So white noise is another absolutely fantastic one. Oh, awesome. Thank you guys for tuning in. Show me some love if you guys are tuning in right now and you guys like fans before bed. Show me some love if you like fans before bed. Um, or during sleep. I like it just going all throughout while I'm sleeping. So it's not even hitting me. It's just the white noise for me. Ensuring adequate exposure to natural light. So again, just going back to we need that natural light exposure during the day to assist us with sleeping, uh, with, with going to bed at night. So this is just recapping and ensuring that during the day, not just before bed, this is sleeping better in general, you're getting nice natural light exposure. So if you can, and this is another thing that I do all the time, open up your windows and have the windows open and make sure you're getting the blinds are open and you're getting some nice natural light in. This one we didn't mention yet, and I've mentioned a few tips along the way, but again, uh, for diplomats that absolutely love routine, this is a real critical one. Establish a regular relaxing bedtime routine. So whether it's using the Calm app, whether it's trying uh, reading a book, uh, having a nice warm tea before bed, and then maybe it's a sequence, maybe it's a uh, warm tea to reading a book to meditating, but having that nice, calming, regular routine, bedtime routine can really assist you in going to bed. And Georgie is another example of that. Before bed, we always read her a book, then we give her the bottle, and then she goes into a room with white noise. So she's very used to that routine. And although it takes about 45 minutes, she knows that that's that at the end of all of that procedure, bedtime is coming and it's in it's locked in her subconscious. And that is the exact same for us. So being able to have that nice regular bedtime routine can really affect the optimizing, really optimize your sleep. At number nine, limiting, and I know this is going to hurt some of the drivers out there, so I put it in specifically for some people that I had in their first sessions at Palmerston North in particular, limiting our daytime naps to only 30 minutes. So if we go longer than 30 minutes for a daytime nap, it can again throw out our, our circadian rhythm because our body thinks that it's going into wrong. So it thinks that it's going into a full night's sleep, whereas for a 30 minute nap, it allows us to get a little bit of sleep, get, get rested, but it doesn't throw off our sleeping patterns. So limiting daytime naps to 30 minutes can also be a great tip for sleeping better. Awesome. Any questions? Hey, Mana, thanks for joining in. 
Hey, Richie. How's it going, you guys? Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. So any questions about those? Quick tips. Awesome. I'm going to take you over to the PH360 app so that you guys can know exactly for you, because everybody is different, when is the best time for you guys to sleep and to start practicing these quick tips that we've gone over today. So let's go into our PH360 app or PH360 platform. Here we go. Resume screen share. All right, I need to new share and share this screen share with you. Awesome, here you go. So now we're over here and we're looking at my personal lifestyle daily schedule. So uh, Mana, Richie, you guys can easily find this within the app. It'll look the exact same and drop any questions if you can't find this. So this is located within lifestyle. So I'll go to the dashboard so that you guys can see where to find this exactly. So here we are, we're in my dashboard and I'm just gonna be clicking on lifestyle right there. And that's gonna take me into my lifestyle area. Now in my lifestyle area, you're gonna get just some, it's, this is more of a broad outlook or overview, I should say, of my daily schedule. So as you can see here, we've got sleep between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. So it's okay for someone like me to wake up early. It's actually, I'm really good at moving between 6 and 9 a.m. And uh, I do move between 6 and 9 a.m., but I used to be moving a lot earlier than that. I used to be moving at about 4.35 o'clock for when I was playing professional basketball, and it didn't feel right with my body. So uh, between 6 and 9 a.m. can be fantastic if you're an activator uh, or for some other phenotypes as well but some of us should not be moving from this time. We should not be going and, and getting moving at that time. It's too early. Be mentally active between nine and 12. Perfect, nailing that, because I'm in New South Wales right now, so I'm being very mentally active during the times that I should be. Use your mind between 12 and two. Awesome, doing that again. Be active between two and three. Move between three and six, create between six and nine, um, rest between nine and 10, and sleep between 10 and 6 a.m. Now, this is something I highly struggle with because my brain is always going. In the initial questions, you know, the question that quite a few of you answered yes to, uh, it, which is, do you find that you're um, mentally stimulated and having? Uh, a lot of thoughts, which is creating sleep disruptions at night. So is your mind active at night, which is causing sleep disruptions? Yes, my mind is active at night. I find my mind to be very active, in fact. And recently after going to Tony Robbins, for example, I felt a lot better knowing that Tony Robbins stayed up until five in the morning and still does to this day in his zone of genius, creating and doing all these other amazing things. I also learned from Tony Robbins that uh, amazing people in history, such as Albert Einstein and uh, Steve Jobs, a few amazing creative artists did the same. So it's not to say that this needs to be a consistent, that you're always doing this. There's gonna be nights where I stay up until five in the morning, just in my zone of genius creating. However, ideally I should be getting to bed at around 10 o'clock. So, that's something that I'm personally working on. Let's go into view detailed schedule. And this is what we were looking at before. And a lot of us were not taken through this in our initial console, make the screen a little bit bigger. So when it comes to our lifestyle daily schedule, let's take a look at between six and eight 
sorry, six and 9 a.m., I should be moving my body, whether it be yoga or mild exercise. And it gives us a nice outline of why, why do, why do I need to do that? So, and, and how to maximize this opportunity and allow your body to balance naturally throughout the rest of the day, exercising or any physical movement of the body, which many people also get when they're running after the kids, their kids, yeah, to get them ready for the, for school, going out for a quick jog while walking the dog first in the first thing in the morning can work well. That was one of the key components I've used in a uh, health and wellness program before, which is just getting out and walking the dog. So today, selfie challenge. If whoever drops a picture of them walking their dog after work tonight is going to get a bonus point for a selfie challenge. Walking the dog. Mana, Richie, thank you guys. You guys are tuning in. You guys have first dibs on the challenge. If you have a dog, borrow someone's dog. You can borrow a dog. Um, yeah, get out, walk a dog, take a selfie for our challenge to challenge this week. Uh, moving on to being mentally active. Yep. Great. Got that under control. Then be active between two and three physical activity that includes work on coordination and movement and multiple body parts at once is very good for you at this time. I encourage you to go through this list, go through your lifestyle list and take a look at why you should be sleeping and um, why you should be waking up to optimize your sleep based on your personal uh, personalized program. Lastly, the other important one is between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. I should be sleeping. You have a body that fun functions great under pressure. Mm -hmm. Live Facebook feeds. Yep. Love it. And is activated by the need for activity. We've mentioned that, but it is important to recharge the batteries at night so that you can be full of energy for the following day. You should be sound asleep during these hours so that your body and brain can regenerate. So let's just talk about, and these are all related to the main, the other main word in this title of this uh, web, web activation webinar, energy. How do we get the most energy sleep optimization and having those three top tips that I'm going to go back to right now. And having proper, uh, ensuring that we're getting enough light and decreasing the amount of uh, that blue light, nutrition and exercise all change our at our energy levels. Sleep changes our energy levels. That's just bottom line. These three things really affect our sleep and they affect our energy levels tenfold. So if you are feeling lags in your energy levels, which I know a lot of us do just in general, I mean, I'd be lying to you if I said, I don't feel that there if there, if there wasn't days where I just do not feel like getting up, I don't feel I have the same energy level. If I'm not sick and there's not something going on mentally, I'm not going through, you know, an emotional turmoil stage. I need to look at these three key components because something has been thrown off within these three. So I really encourage you guys to look at light nutrition and exercise again, and revisit these top tips and see if we can optimize your sleep moving forward in the next month. Because ultimately during this health and wellness program, we're only just trying to lift the game month by month. And when we say lift the game, it's in all key components of life. This is a lifestyle program. It's health and well being. It's not just one single component. It's not just nutrition. It's not just selfies at the gym, although they are rocking. It is, it is a wellness game. So please take into consideration all of these different key tips for sleep. So what we covered today, why is optimizing sleep so important? Just quickly to review, it literally decreases illness and it increases our energy levels, our happiness, our joy, the release of our cortisol, uh, it literally assists us on all the different uh, levels and things within our life. So 
why is sleep so important? Because it makes us happy and it allows us to perform well at work. It allows us to communicate well. It allows us to love our family, love our friends in a way that best serves them and ourselves. It allows us to get back to the world, do all of the things, all the main key values that you have. Sleep helps with those. Then we went over our three tips. And then we went over how to utilize and see our tips around sleep in our personalized PH360 platform, as well as the Shea app. Hey Sage, thanks for waving. And lastly, our Q&A on energy levels and sleep optimization. All right, we've got two people tuning in. I'm just gonna throw in some love to you guys for tuning in, thank you. Any questions? I know that there's a bit of a lag on the Facebook live feed. Any questions around your sleep optimization, how these three light nutrition exercise can affect your sleep or better yet, any questions around our coaching hot tips today? So these are our hot tips. And if you have some more hot tips, I encourage you to drop them in for our team, for the team. So um, we'd love to hear what helps you sleep better. Uh, please drop them in the comment section below. And uh, this will be shared across all groups. So we'd love any other hot tips that you guys have drop them in, we can use them moving forward. We really appreciate it and your team will really appreciate it. So hot tips on sleep would be awesome. Uh, we were going to do a challenge this week and it was a sleep optimization challenge. And then we just realized that, you know, a selfie of you sleeping probably was uh, not the best way to prove that you were sleeping on time. Although it would have equated in some hilarious sleeping selfies. Uh, we went with what you guys are already rocking, which is just increasing the amount of selfies of you guys at the gym and increasing the amount of selfies of you guys doing activities. Hi, Cassie. Thanks for tuning in. Any questions at all? Even if Cassie, even if you missed uh, the session, do you have any questions around sleep and how that energizes or adds to your energy optimization? how to optimize sleep, how to optimize your energy. Any questions, let me know. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Love it, love it, love it. And if you have any questions on the replay, drop the questions in. As you guys know, we're gonna go right back through those questions. You'll receive a response from one of the coaches within 48 hours. We would love to help you guys out. Now, for me, I personally, plan this session so that I can go for a nap right after this. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going for a nap. I'm too excited now. I've done too much screens, right? So remember that I can't go for a nap while I've been looking at the screen for too long. That's, that's weight. It's going against everything that we just learned. So I'm not going to have a nap, but I am excited because I'm staying at my best friend's house and this is the comfiest king size bed you could imagine. Taking photos of each other sleeping could get creepy. Yes, that could, but also it could be one of the funniest challenges that we've ever asked, Sage. We're, we're gonna have to revisit that and um, ensure that there's no, I mean, when I played university basketball there, it, it got into some pretty crazy initiations in my first year as a rookie when I was sleeping. Lipstick, whipped cream, a lot of drawing on my, arms and legs, body. Yeah. Embarrassing at the time, hilarious looking back. So, so happy. I got to experience all of those uh, things that we get to do in Canada and US, which don't happen in Australia quite as much when it comes to initiation, but back to any questions. So just waiting because it takes a bit to, for me to get to the point where there might be some questions. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. And feel free to share this with any loved ones, family, friends that are having trouble sleeping. If you believe that this could benefit them, this is for the Vulcan family and our close immediate family. So just like the mental health line, we want this to be incorporated with everyone that you guys love and want to share these with. So thank you again for tuning in. Remember, this is your last week 
of the 30 day challenge. Get the selfies going. We've had some questions about how close am I to the next person and the next uh, person in the lead. There is, it is a tight, it is tight, tight as a taiga right now for who will win in each tribe. So don't give up, keep them coming. We are absolutely loving your energy and I will see you guys very soon. If you haven't booked in for your final call, I'm just talking to you, Palmerston North. I personally messaged most of you guys today. If you had Facebook, everybody today, we'd love for you guys to book in your final call over the next few days or next week, get you on your call and wait for what is to come. We're going to go into a next level of our, our journey in health and wellness with you guys. So really looking forward to that as well. And any questions, drop them below. We'll get right back to you. Have an amazing Wednesday night. See you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Peace out.